All right, welcome back, everybody, to the Daily Step Podcast. We are on Chapter 5 of Way of the Ascetics by Tito Corleander. All right, here we go. Chapter 5 on the denial of self and the cleansing of the heart. Naked, small and helpless, you now pass on the most difficult of all human tasks to conquer your own selfish desires. Ultimately, it is just this, self persecution on which your warfare depends for as long as your selfish will rules you cannot pray to the lord with a pure heart thy will be done if you cannot get rid of your own greatness neither can you lay yourself open for real greatness if you cling to your own freedom you cannot share in true freedom where only one will reign the saint's deep secret is this do not seek freedom, and freedom will be given you. The earth brings forth thorns and thistles. It is said, by the sweat of his brow, with anguish shall man till it. It is he himself, his own substance. The Holy Father's counsel is to begin with small things. For, says Ephraim the Syrian, how can you put out a great fire before you have learned to quench a small one? If you wish to set yourself free from great suffering, crush the small desires, say the Holy Fathers. Do not suppose that one can be separated from the others. They all hang together like a long chain or net. Thus, it does not pay to come to grips with the hard-to-master great vices and bad habits you have acquired without this, at the same time overcoming your small, innocent weaknesses. Your taste for sweets, your urge to talk, your curiosity, your meddling. For finally, all our desires, great and small, are built on the same foundation. Our unchecked habit of satisfying only our own will. It is the life of our will that is destroyed. Since the fall, the will has been running errands exclusively for its own ego. For this reason, our warfare is directed against the life of self-will as such, and it should be undertaken without delay or wearing. If you have the urge to ask something, don't ask. If you have the urge to drink two cups of coffee, drink only one. If you have the urge to look at the clock, don't look. If you wish to smoke a cigarette, refrain. If you want to go visiting, stay at home. This is self-persecution. In this way does one silence, with God's help, one's loud-voiced will. You are perhaps wondering, is this really necessary? The Holy Fathers reply with, one, with another question. Do you really think that you can fill a jar with clean water before the old dirty water has been emptied out? Or do you wish to receive a beloved guest in a room crammed with old trash and junk? No, he who hopes to see the Lord as he is purifies himself, says the Apostle John. Thus, let us purify our heart. Let us throw out all the dusty trash that is stored there. Let us scrub the dirty floor, wash the windows, and open them. In order that the light and air may come into the room, we are preparing as a sanctuary for the Lord. Then let us put on clean garments so that the old musty smell may not cling to us and we find ourselves thrust out. May all this be our daily and hourly travail. In this way, we are only doing what the Lord himself commanded us through his holy apostle, James, who says, purify your hearts. And the apostle Paul instructs us to cleanse ourselves from the filthiness of the flesh and spirit. For from within, says Christ, out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. Therefore, he who exhorts the Pharisees, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. 
As we now follow instructions to begin with the inside, we must keep in mind that we are not in the least cleansing our heart for our own sake. It is not for our own enjoyment that we furbish and tidy the guest chamber, but in order that the guest may enjoy it. Will he find it pleasant, we ask ourselves? Will he stay? Our every thought is for him. Then we withdraw and keep in the background and expect no recompense. There are three kinds of nature in man. The carnal man, who wants to live for his own pleasure, even if it harms others. The natural man, who wants to please both himself and others. The spiritual man, who wants to please only God, even if it harms himself. The first is lower than human nature, the second is normal, and the third is above nature. It is life in Christ. Spiritual man thinks spiritually. His hope is sometime to hear the angel joy over one sinner that repenteth, and that sinner is himself. Such should be our feeling, and in this hope you should labor. For the Lord has bidden us, be perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect, and to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Therefore, give yourself no rest. Allow yourself no peace until you have slain that part within you that belongs to your carnal nature. Make it your purpose to track down every sign of the beastal within you and persecute it relentlessly. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. But if you are fearful of becoming self-righteous from working for your own salvation, or afraid of being overcome by spiritual pride, examine yourself and observe that the person who is afraid of becoming self-righteous suffers from blindness, for he does not see how self-righteous he is. All right, guys, that was chapter five. Have a good rest of your day and remember to walk with Christ one step at a time. All right. Bye. See you tomorrow.